Hello, everyone. All right, it's Corey. I'm gonna do some more uh, examples. These are gonna be the examples of Venus and the Logitati of Venus. Again, still, we're still going with that. And like I said, I wanted to be thorough and give a lot more examples. And uh, we're still gonna be talking about mainly Venus being delighted by Mercury in this one. Okay, so this is the chart of Arnold Schwarzenegger. He was a bodybuilder, and uh, then he went on to be a politician. And so this is kind of interesting because politicians are mainly ruled by Venus, and especially ones that aren't like the president or the king, the main one, the ministers, or like parliament or senators or congressmen. These people are actually ruled by Venus, just so you know. And Venus represents the diplomats and the ministers to the king. And actually, you can even see that in the zodiac because the two advisor planets are Jupiter and Venus. Venus is the more worldly advisor. And that's why Venus's signs are closer to the king who relies on them more frequently for worldly advice. So like Taurus and Libra, these two signs are closer to the sign of the king, Leo, and the signs of royalty, king, queen, of cancer, and Leo. And then you can see that Jupiter's signs are way over here by Saturn. Jupiter signs of Pisces and Sag, and the the priest the, the the side of Jupiter is more like spiritual wisdom, and not as much worldly wisdom. And so that's what the the masses, the poor people, and the common folk rely on the most because they don't even have the money to make big worldly decisions. Um, and so they mainly just have to rely on their faith, and they rely on the Jupiterian type of uh, priesthood and counseling. Just so you guys know. And that's, you know, there's, if you're into yoga and philosophy, then you know that, you know, throughout every tradition, Christianity, Islam, Buddhism, Hinduism, they always say God loves the poor, you know, um, God loves those who do not have anything to rely on except God, you know what I mean? Because when you're, you got to be honest, like when your life's going amazing and when you're like rich and you have money and all these great things, you maybe don't really think about the divine or God as much. But when your life's terrible, you're always praying and thinking about God, please help me, you know? So uh, it's kind of funny how it is. And, um, you know, one of my favorite gurus said like, one who remembers God in their hour of happiness is the one who remembers God best, you know? Um, so anyways, uh, Venus is a part is a minister, more of the worldly diplomat, more of the um, yeah, more of the one that's not necessarily uh, like about helping you find out who you are deep down and give you self knowledge like Jupiter, but is more about helping you find how to make your way in the world, how to be more comfortable, how to live well, how to have good relationships, these sort of things. So politicians are kind of representing that role on some level because they're like trying to make their constituents and their the places that they're representative of they're trying to ideally seek the well-being of them but the problem is that um most politicians these days are like shudra caste mentality or the servant caste mentality or they're more of the vaisha the merchant caste mentality which disqualifies them from uh pol political placements and we need more um, kshatriyas and brahmin people in the political field. But that will only happen when the entire consciousness of our planet is uplifted and we can re reflect that need. But because the majority of people on Earth are very ignorant still, um, we're not, you know, there's no ideal politician that's going to save us. I'm sorry, it's just not going to happen. And so we all lift up our consciousness. Then a politician will somehow show up that will reflect that. Um, anywho, so Venus in the first is, uh, is a great placement for having a healthy body and the first house is the career. So again, a political career could be indicated when someone has Venus in the first house. Um, the ruling planet cancer or sorry, the ruling planet, the moon goes to the seventh house of the public as well. That's another key factor for working with the public and being a politician, but the other cool thing is that Venus, like I said, represents Virya and like muscle development and rejuvenation. And, you know, Vir Venus rules the muscle tissue. Um, and this is controversial because normally we're taught that Mars rules muscle. But uh, if you want to know more information about that, uh, let me know. I can, I can send you some classes and 
more advanced things on that. But I've got to tell you that really, yes, Mars is very important as well, but Venus is a critical planet for muscle development because Venus is the water element, which absorbs minerals and absorbs and literally muscles have to like bring more water into the muscle, you know? And like, that's what creatine and those crazy supplements do is they just, they just like bring more water and swell up your muscles in an unnatural way. But that's, uh, that's Venus's job. And Venus is about virion, and rejuvenation and absorbing the good minerals. And so a strong Venus makes your body just shine and it makes you glow and you have a ogis, you know, and you have a strong constitution that, so I'm just saying that because Arnold Schwarzenegger obviously, you know, was a huge bodybuilder and worked on his body. And so Venus there on the ascendant, very close to the ascendant degree, was a major help. Mercury is right on the ascendant though. So he has, he has dig bala, he has strong Mercury. So yeah, this Venus is delighted by Mercury. And so he probably just had a lot more like, um, like he was, there's probably just something about him where, you know, he was maybe motivated because Venus and Mercury are also starved by the moon and the moon is in the seventh house. So maybe the way that other people present, like uh, maybe to make himself more attractive, there was probably some weird, some issue that made him want to build himself up and be a strong bodybuilder but he was able to do it well probably because of this Venus and Mercury delight. Of course, having Sun and Leo is um, a good placement too. But what's funny is Sun Saturn conjunct in Leo is a classic, classic placement for like uh, uh, having issues with compensating, like overcompensating. So it's kind of funny that he was a huge bodybuilder because uh, I don't know, that's, that's just, uh, it's interesting because if, you know, if you learn all these avashtas, you'll learn the Sun Saturn one is a very tough avashta where one can be like a like they'll try to show off their masculinity a lot more than necessary sometimes because they feel like deep down they don't have it as much. So that's kind of interesting. You wouldn't expect that with Arnold Schwarzenegger, but you know what would drive a man to to work so much? And you know these guys that are that work out and have these crazy bodies, they literally have to be at the gym like almost all the time of their life, you know. And so you can see how, in a way, that Venus Mercury is delighting him, and it made him rajasic and and strong in his body, and have good food and know what to do, the right exercise, the right things. You know, he probably researched. Uh, he had good friends that supported him. You know, all these Mercury Venus things that I keep talking about. Um, he had, you know, probably a, just the, his, uh, the support of his body was there with Venus and Mercury, um, good digestion, you know, this or that. Um, but why, what would make him do that? You know, what would drive him to do that? That's probably more to do with his K2 issues and the Rahu Mars, you know, um, which can make one be afraid of not being Mars enough. So they have to, they feel like they have to do so much to develop it in the sun of Gemini of like the arms and expressing and doing, and then the sun Saturn stuff. But we're not going to focus on that because this class, this is just about Venus and Mercury. Um, so Venus is delighted by Mercury here. And we have someone who was a strong uh, bodybuilder, strong first house person, two benefics in the first house. They're both delighting each other. And then he also had, um, he was a politician. That was the other thing I was going to say. And it's also interesting because the moon is like curves and like softness and flabbiness, you know what I mean? And so his Venus and Mercury and his Senate were starved by the curves. So he wanted to be like this cut, you know, really cut type of uh, bodybuilder guy who had no soft, flabby moonness to it. So that's even kind of interesting too. All right. So the next example, this is an example of just a random person that I know from my life. And uh, okay, so we have a Leo ascendant, sun is in the third house, and uh, it's starved by Venus. We won't go into that, debilitated um, with K2, but there's a lot of Venus qualities there because of ruling planet goes there and because K2's in Libra. And so we already know he's a very Venusian person. Um, and then Venus and Mercury are delighting each other in the fourth house in Scorpio. So this is a chart where um, this was a guy that uh, was very like, yeah, in my opinion, he was sort of, uh, 
how did I say this in a good way? Um, he was very promiscuous and I always kind of felt issue. I just couldn't, I just didn't like how he was with um, dating and with women. I, and I think just being a reader and a healer, I could kind of see into these issues, you know, and how he had a K2, you know, in Libra and Mars starving the sun and sun starving Mars there. It's some weird issues with, with relationships and sex and stuff and then having Rahu at Jupiter like not really knowing how to be a good right man or guy maybe but um that Mercury Venus and Scorpio means like like I said earlier um lots of interest in sex and you know some interest in occult things too maybe Scorpio things but um both of those you know rajasic planets there and the only other aspects are from Jupiter, which is a brown planet, which could help. And then it's with Rahu. So it's like, ah, so there's not much really goodness also hitting that. The lore of that fourth house is shamed. So there's kind of some difficult, like negative stuff going on with that. And I think I could kind of always see into that. But when he was younger, he was like really, uh, like, I don't know, I guess he seemed really lucky at first, like when he, when he was younger. Uh, your K2, you can kind of like get away with your K2 issues more a lot when you're younger, especially if you're ruling planets with it in the beginning. Um, and he was running a Jupiter Dasha, which was in the ninth house. Um, so there were some lucky things going on. And uh, I don't know, I was always really like, he seemed like he would get lucky, you know, a lot or in this very, you know, just, just by social circles, I was very grossed out by, by his uh, activities. And um, he seemed like he got more attention from women than he deserved, and it still was never enough for him. You know what I mean? And it, it, and it never was enough. And so that's what I'm saying, that Venus and Mercury thing. It's like, Mercury's just superficially curious. So with Venus there and Scorpio, it's like one's just curious about sex, but doesn't really care about being a real per partner or about committing or about real relationships or about the purpose of sex. The purpose deals with Jupiter and Jupiter's with Rahu in the ninth house, the ninth house is purpose. So sadly, this person doesn't know their purpose, doesn't know how to find it. And, uh, you know, would just keep trying to have sexual activities and experiences to just avoid that and just to have fun and keep, keep having fun. And, just kind of a guy that just wants to party, you know, or just wants to have fun and wants to party and dance. And I, um, you know, and uh, would always be doing that. And then as he got older, you know, he's older than I am. And uh, so his, or no, he's the same age as me. Yeah. Uh, so his, like, you know, he's just like slowly not being able to get away with that as much. It's like, you're growing up, dude. Like, what are you doing? Um, <clears throat> you can't just like <clears throat> try to be a DJ your whole life or something like um <clears throat> and so yeah you can see a lot of the uh in a way it's been good like some of the best maybe fun he's had has been because of that venus but it's also got him into way more trouble it's also part of his like k2 pathologies so the more that his life goes on the more he he doesn't really seem so fulfilled he seems more confused because he's not you know figuring out his greater purpose with uh, Rahu Jupiter there, or at least that's what he does need to do. So if he was unhappy or frustrated or something, then that's what I would suggest that he do. <clears throat> so that's, um, yeah, that's, that's another example of how this can play out. But, uh, oh yeah, this is something I was going to say. So if you're a woman and you're dating someone and you really like him, but he seems like kind of like a party boy or something. And he has that Mercury Venus conjunction. You should be very careful with that and make sure his Jupiter is very good. Make sure his 10th house has no really rough things obstructing it. Um, you know, it'd be great if you didn't have cruel planets in the first and 10th house and he had a good Jupiter and a good fifth house, then he'd be a really good guy probably. And that Mercury Jupiter will manifest in healthy ways. This is just one little placement. So it's not like going to, decide everything for a partner but it's just important to know that the mercury venus conjunction like in the seventh house is like someone who's just curious about having sex basically and you don't you know if you're not on that same level then you don't want to be with him because you're going to get very hurt um 
So this is Brad Pitt's chart. Venus and Mercury are conjunct, but Moon is in between, and there's a lot of stuff going on here in the Sivashta. So this doesn't explain everything in Brad Pitt's life, but you know, Mercury and Venus are here in the face, you know, he's got a very attractive face, you know, Mercury is the most pleasantly formed, as Krasher says, Venus is splendid, these two in the face, or in the second house, can make one have a very attractive face, um, in the same way that, you know, like Arnold's was in the body, and he had a very strong body. Now, Brad Pitt's body is very strong and healthy, too, with this strong masculine sun in it, in the first house as well. Um, but I don't want to talk too much about this chart because it's got a lot of avashtas going on. So there's a lot going on with Brad Pitt. Mr. Pitt is maybe not as fulfilled as you would, as you would expect if you had had his life or whatever. Um, the main thing, though, is it's in the sign of Capricorn. That's the sign of work. So kind of the same way I was talking about, like this Mercury and Venus, it makes you really rajasic. So it's like it's never enough. It's like you're just okay, I just played this role. I just won these awards. Now I'll go and do this thing. And to me, I just think about that. I'm like, man, you're a celebrity. You got billions of dollars. You could just go and like start some, some nonprofit thing that like changes the world. But then they want to go and just be like World War Z and do another movie again and do another and another and another. And I'm just like, all right, I guess that's what you want to do. But you got to wonder if that's really the way for that person to be more happy if they just did that a dozen times and they're still not fulfilled. The definition of creative insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. But as a counselor, I must say, I myself do that. We all do that a lot. It's kind of funny. Um, so that's that Capricorn got some avashas in there that are unsettling too. Mars is exalted and it's shaming Mercury, Moon, and Venus. So there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of other difficult things that make him not not as happy as you might expect. All right, and so this is the chart of uh, just another person, just a person I know. Um, he's not a famous celebrity or anything, and he's also a Cancer. His moon's in the 10th house. Um, he's involved in the food and beverage industry with restaurants. The moon can have to do with that. But we're looking at Venus here. Venus is Gemini. Um, so Venus is delighted by Mercury. So there's all these possibilities there's all these um things happening when it comes to the uh like how he expresses and how he's studying he's always curious he's reading about um you know he's just always reading all these kinds of things like um you know some science article some physics thing some other art he's always um doing that stuff and sends me a lot of these things. Um, Mercury and Venus are interchanging. The 12th floor is in the 11th, the 11th floor is in the 12th. So that's a, that's kind of a tough yoga. That's a misery or a Dania yoga. So that can create a theme of um, some sort of misery dealing with 11th house things. Uh, I don't know how that might be related to his life, but that's the delight. Mercury is also delighted by Venus in this chart, just so you know, and Venus is also delighted by Mercury. Um, he, is his venus is also ashamed though you see so this is the sun and rahu are there so whenever a planet's with sun and rahu or ketu it gets shamed so venus is ashamed by the sun so he has had um the delight of mercury in many ways like he's he's always reading different things and studying and learning new things and stuff and really superficially curious about a lot of things but i've got to say that the more yeah, the it's it seems like that delight is not enough to overcome the sun issues because the sun is starving Venus and um he definitely has it's not that he's ashamed of let me be let me backtrack it. Okay, Venus is still strong and can handle that shame, but it's still affected by that. And so there are deep down subconscious issues that he doesn't seem to understand. Um that really that really prod him and make him say crazy things. They just make him say the craziest things and he just thinks they're normal. And he just thinks that like, I'm gonna validate them and he always expects me to. And I'm like, nope, sorry, can't validate your craziness. That's not how, nope, that's not how it goes. And you see he has this ball in Jupiter in the seventh. He doesn't listen to people and he doesn't really, yeah, he just doesn't listen to people. So this is a very, very, one of the toughest charts I've ever counseled someone with. Um, 
ask because it's just there's a lot of shame from there and then look at the fifth house saturn with any planet in the fifth house causes shame mars with any planet in the fifth house causes shame so there's both of these saturn and mars are both shaming each other in the sign of vulnerabilities and deep sexual issues and then you know venus is shamed by the sun also so another planet of sexuality so there's a lot of like sexuality issues um you know a lot of people think they can get enlightened through sex it's this funny crazy idea and it's completely untrue you're not ever going to get enlightened through sex having sex feels good that's great that's not enlightenment enlightenment is not feeling good being on drugs is not enlightenment either Otherwise, everyone would have been enlightened because almost everyone's done drugs <laughs> and everyone's still miserable on planet Earth, people. Come on. So there are just like all these kooky ideas going around in our culture, modern times. And there's a lot of people who think they can get enlightened through just having more crazy sex. And I'm sorry, but that's a delusion. And you, when you look at those people's charts, they may not be this bad, but they'll have some you know, their Venus will be diluted. It will be star by moon or something like that. Um, Venus is great and sex is great, but that's just one aspect of life. And as other yogis and people have said, like sex is like, like the lowest form of a divine energy. So if you're the most, like sex is divine in a sense, but it's only if you're the most uninvolved, unevolved being is that the most enlightening thing to you. You know what I mean? And that's like really the, I just have to say, since we're talking about Venus, like that's, you, I, the, the people I feel sorry for the most are people who never see anything more than sex in this life. You know what I mean? And those are the people that I truly pity the most in life. Um, so strive to see something beyond that. If, but I doubt anyone who feels that way is watching this because you wouldn't be watching this video if that was how you felt. All right, so then, and then this is George Lucas. Uh, he also has a Taurus ascendant, like that example I gave previously of a friend, Venus and Mercury in the ascendant and the sun in the ascendant. So Venus is very strong in its own sign and it's being delighted by Mercury. So it's really, really strong. So it can handle the sun because the Venus is starving the sun here. So the sun's agitating it, yes. And there, the, the funny thing is that George Lucas has been very agitated by authorities in his life. And you can watch a hilarious YouTube video about um, like George Lucas versus Hollywood or something. I watched it one time, it was amazing. And it just stumbled, it was one of those things that YouTube recommended me, just like one of these videos maybe. But um, it was amazing, like all the times he's battled against the corporate Hollywood executives that have tried to like control his movies and kind of like just make money and inhibit his creativity. And he's always battled with them and always been agitated by them. And um, <clears throat> like, uh, he's just done a lot of really great things, you know? And, and like, you know, when he sold Star Wars to Disney, he literally accidentally misspoke and called Disney white slavers. He was like, yeah, it's like I sold my baby to the white slavers. And then immediate, and then the, the guy interviewing him was like, and he immediately was like, and I mean, and he tried to like kind of cover it up, but he, he's a really good guy and, he's a, and he does a lot of good with his money and his resources, but he's been agitated by uh, the system and authorities, which is kind of like the sun in a way. Um, so, but this Venus Mercury, that hasn't been enough to keep him from uh, producing a ton of amazing things and a, a ton of amazing uh, art and work. Um, it's also Raja Yoga, you know, having the Mercury, the, the fifth and first and fourth Lords all together. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Actually, this Venus it actually blocks that yoga on another level too, um, with being sixth Lord. So I, that's too confusing, but, um, there, he has good yogas. He has just a lot of good yogas. Um, he has Jupiter in the fourth as well. And he has moon Jupiter. He has one, two, three, four five planets on angles so he basically has like the pestle yoga the musala yoga which is a really great yoga to have when almost all or all your planets are in fixed signs so he's very like devoted and consistent and stable and like secure and so he didn't waver a lot you know like he made his first movies and they weren't successful and he kept making them and then he finally made star wars you know so that's a really important quality and that's why you know devotion is is really praised in um vedic culture and society because um, if you read about the Ashraya yogas 
the Raju Yoga is the one that one will change a lot and they have all their plants in changeable signs. But if you have the, the other two are much better, the Nala, the Reed Yoga and the Masala, the Pistol Yoga, because um, like in this case, you know, he's been fixed and devoted. He, they don't change as quickly. Um, and, you know, they can be kind of stagnant, but when they do change, they stick to that and they go far with it. So it's a really good thing. All right, so I'll move on to other avashtas in the, in the next few videos. Thanks, you guys.